Hi, I'm Carol Wilson, Editor-at-Large for Light Reading, and I'm here with Michael Kearns of Huawei to talk about SDNO. Uh, we're here at the Open Networking Summit, Michael, and you've got an interesting demonstration to do for us also, but That's right, we're going to start by talking about why on-demand networks are important, or, or at least what, what it is that on-demand networks are going to deliver, sure. and that's part of what SDNO is about, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. So, okay. so the, the purpose of the SDN orchestrator is to abstract the network so that you can deliver the complex network services in on-demand. Uh, traditionally, this is a very difficult thing for the operators to be able to do. Uh, they have not been able to achieve the uh, on-demand re request for network services. So. Uh, the SDNO does this by uh, consolidating all of that service logic and functionality into a single orchestration component okay. to automate the full life cycle of the uh, network service. Yeah. Okay, and that runs above what, those underlying physical networks that constrain them today, correct? That's correct. It's, okay. it, it's both the physical networks, but also it must deal with the, the uh, transformation to the virtualized network. So oh, okay. it must be abstracted in such a way that it can deal with both the physical and virtualized and the, uh, and the move and the shift and the evolution from one to the other. You okay. know, so, um, the concept is to have a very simple uh, abstraction layer where you can say connect to A, B, C and D with a certain quality of service and that's very transparent as to what the underlying technologies or vendor implementations are. Okay, so, yeah, okay. that makes sense. sense. So uh, the traditional problem with the network services is that they're very complex and the traditional OSS has dealt with this in a way that uh, it uses a uh, fragmented, uh, siloed-based approach. Right. Uh, and so therefore, the automation in this space has been very poor, uh, typically. True. Uh, so what we're doing is we're saying, okay, well, in order to be able to deliver these services on demand, you must be able to uh, have a more horizontal, real-time approach where you can quickly introduce the services, you can uh, provide the provisioning for those services and the operation of those services. So it's really taking what is currently distributed around the OSS and fragmented mm -hmm. uh, and actually consolidating into a full life cycle orchestration capability. You know? Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so uh, this means getting new service offerings into the marketplace in a number of weeks. So taking a kind of a DevOps type approach to being able to uh, quickly compose services from very complex network environments into service offerings that can be delivered to the customer okay. for the end-to-end -end network service. Um, and also then being able to maintain and extend those services very quickly. So introducing new device uh, releases or new controller releases very quickly in a matter of days. Not, not the traditional cycle of months and, and even, oh, okay. uh, you know, even year to uh, introduce that. Okay. As I said as well, the very important part is it must be able to deal with the trans tra transition between the legacy network uh, and, the, and the new SDN controlled network. Okay. So it's an abstraction that can handle that uh, transition and it and allow you to also quickly adapt new capabilities as they come on board. You know? Okay, so in this situation, you've got a typical element management system here, and that goes in, yes. that feeds in from the legacy to the SDN orchestrator. Okay, that's right. And you could, you could go to an element management system, or you could go directly, directly. to the device. Okay, uh, or you can go through the SD, uh, the SDN controllers that are available okay. to you. And then you must support all the different interfaces. So you have to have a very flexible uh, framework to be able to do this, and a very flexible platform to be able okay. to do it. Okay, that makes sense. So one of the more very common languages that are used today for modeling services in the network environment is the Yang uh, language. Right. Um, and in this case, I, and in the demonstration, we're, we're going to talk about how we use Yang and how the Yang can be used to quickly introduce these complex services. So Yang is a very rich modeling language, and you can model a very complex multi-layer, multi multi-hierarchy type services. Um, and, uh, with that, then you can, we have the orchestrator should be able to import those models at runtime, okay. uh, without having to recode the orchestrator or change any code oh, okay. or go through that software development cycle that was more traditional. Okay. And then from once you import the the uh, Yang model, what the orchestrator will do is it'll create north and south and southbound APIs for the for the okay. Uh, okay. service itself. And uh, this is at the step four is where you actually are mapping down into the network layer. So whether that's the northbound interface of the SDN controller or the uh, legacy device uh, API or the EMS. So what we're doing is we're providing a very flexible way to configure the mappings between those APIs so that you can abstract it into the orchestrator. Okay. A, a common information model is critical to this within the orchestrator because that's the separation between uh, the, the vendor specific stuff right, at the right. bottom 
and the domain specific stuff and then the the actual uh, orchestration engines that it can it shouldn't it shouldn't be exposed to that you know? and so you, yeah. they, they can speak the same language on some yeah, level yeah, okay yeah, that makes okay. sense okay so uh, just a, a quick overview of the design process effectively you, you model your service in yang um, we can also model services in things like tosca or we can model them in xml okay. there's different ways we we, we wouldn't uh, uh, you know, we wouldn't advocate one versus the other. In the network area, it seems to be that people would uh, generally go with the Yang today, but it's also evolving to use other. Uh, but you need to have a mechanism that's independent. You know? Okay. That okay. So we 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 describe this is describing a layer three VPN, uh, which is a complex enough service in the network environment, and you describe that in in uh, Yang and you model it, and then you import that model into the orchestrator. You know? I've never seen okay. what Yang looked like. That's fascinating. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then what you do is uh, internally, then that gets uh, sucked into the orchestrator in an internal model, which uh, is used by okay. the orchestrator okay. to do its orchestration effectively, to do its provisioning, in which it does in a generic manner. It doesn't have to know anything about specific technologies. It's only through the modeling that it, 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 it understands the technologies. And this is how you can decouple the software cycles and the development from the actual uh, uh, Hardware, introduction of right, the actual right. services and, and okay. technologies. You know? That makes sense. Okay. So, uh, as I say, you auto generates the internal service models in MBI, and then you must configure the mappings down into down the to southbound. southbound. Yeah. Okay. okay. But it's all a rapid uh, pro uh, process. Okay. So, uh, in terms of the demo that we have here today, mm -hmm. we're, we've set up a demo which actually re uh, reflects the different, uh, the different legacy and SDN controlled networks. So, okay. we have uh, branch offices. Uh, connected into a headquarter um, over an IP RAN network in the in the in the access, which is going over an IP core. Okay. Uh, in the access, we have uh, Huawei uh, devices, which are controlled by an Onus uh, uh, SDN controller, and interface to that is a RESTful-based uh, interface. Okay. On the right-hand side, then we have some ALU devices, which are in the IP core, and in the IP core, then we have uh, uh, we're using SNMP and CLI. So okay. we can use a combination of protocols. We're agnostic of which protocols we could use there. And that's true of the yeah. controller as well? And that's true if the controller supports other interfaces, we can, we can support those. It's designed to be agnostic. It's very important that it can, it can adapt to different protocols as they, as they evolve. You know? okay. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're, we, we're going to enter a service definition. We're going to configure cross-domain service policies, which show you like how we build up the end-to-end -end service definition. Okay. And we're going to add policies for the IP RAN and the IP core. Okay. Uh, and the whole idea is to get it to a point where we can just press one button and, and the service comes up. You know? wow. okay. So it's a complex service, right? Um, then we're going to show how you could add a new device type. We'll do some uh, resource discovery. Okay. We'll show the process for adding a new device type, okay. which is very important because the device, the devices, uh, the equipment, and the controllers actually evolve quite quickly. Right. So sure. you need to be able to have a process that's very uh, rapid for well, adoption, tear, tear adopting it. Yeah. This is the major cost for the operator, you know. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so and then we'll look at the multi-vendor. Uh, multi-protocol uh, service activation. So we'll activate the service, and you'll see the service itself. Okay. You know? okay. So welcome. We're going to we're going to show the SDNO uh, demonstration now. So we'll take you through the various steps of the service create service definition, uh, ser the the uh, discovery of the inventory for the devices that we're managing within the network, and then the provisioning of the uh, service and activation of the service itself. Okay. This is a live demo uh, in the China lab. Yes. So the first, the first thing we've got to do, and uh, the first step in the uh, in the demonstration is to look at the at uh, the service definition. So we're going to create a, a service definition. It's a multi-domain service definition, um, and we, we, the first thing is we we will uh, build the cross-domain service policies. Um, so we're looking at a service that transits both an IP RAN and an IP core. So it's an end-to-end -end service over multiple multi-vendor network. So uh, what we're doing is we're selecting the various attributes that we need to set up for the, for the uh, cross-domain uh, rules. And uh, then we will look at creating uh, the configuration for each of the individual domains themselves. So we're setting the uh, configuration for the protection here. And the configuration for the protection was just, we, did, we decided not to configure any. And now we're choosing the uh, traffic engineering uh, capabilities here. So we're choosing the shortest path uh, capability. OK, and for the tunnel technology, we're using LDP. Okay.
So the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, specify the uh, policies for the individual domains, so the IP RAN and the IP core. And uh, what we're going to do is just use the default uh, policies that we would have, we're going to inherit the same policies that we would have had uh, for the cross domain, just to make for the purpose of the demo. But you can be very specific on these policies, you can uh, do them right down to a very fine grained uh, level. And once we uh, have completed this, then what we will do is uh, we, will, we will show how, how you can uh, then build up the uh, service request um, and provision that service. Okay, so this adds a, a new service uh, type, uh, service definition to our uh, catalog. So now we have a service offering that we can use. So what we're going to do is just uh, play a brief video uh, to show how we add support for uh, devices. So we, were trying, we have already got the support in there for the Huawei devices. Uh, and now we're adding support for the uh, Alcatel Lucent 7750 devices, which are active in the IP core. So what we're doing now is we're synchronizing with those new device types, those new ILU devices. And we're discovering the inventory. Uh, and we will now be ready to be able to provision those because we've already uh, designed the service with these device types. Okay. So to provision a service, uh, we must select the uh, first select the, the new service uh, temp service definition that we have created, and uh, based on that service definition, then uh, we can choose the uh, create uh, use the sites that we've already created for uh, the tenant, and uh, connect the two sites using the service definition. So we've got some parameters to provide here uh, for the PE configuration, for the CE configuration, and for the routing uh, configuration. So what we're doing here is we're setting up all the uh, connectivity for the tenant uh, network. And in this, in this uh, step, we're also inheriting uh, the attributes that would default in the service template itself. So we don't have to specify every uh, configuration parameter in setting up the service. So what we're doing now is we're adding the uh, site. So we're doing this, the site, uh, which will represent the uh, other end of uh, one of the connection points in the VPN. Okay, so now we have, uh, we've set up the connectivity in the IP core to the HQ. And now what we're doing is we're calculating the uh, connection, the link between the IP core and the IP RAN. Uh, so uh, now we'll be able to actually activate the service into the network. Actually, provision it into the network first, and then uh, once it's provisioned into the network, we can turn it to, uh, to active. Basically. So remember, this is running in a live environment, so we are actually uh, provisioning this service live in uh, in a network in a uh, lab in China. Okay, so you can see that the service is inactive, but it's actually on the devices at this point. So what we can do now is we can activate the service, but before we do that, we will look at the uh, traffic. Uh, to see if there's any traffic going across this service. So this is just a traffic generation tool. We're looking at the two endpoints that uh, are, are form the endpoints of the service, and we're looking to see if there's any traffic. So there's no traffic generated. So what we'll do is when we provision and act, when we activate the service, then we'll come back here and we'll have a look and see the traffic itself is being generated. So we're activating the service now. Okay, so now the service has been activated. Uh, and we go back to the traffic generator and we can have a look to see uh, the live traffic actually coming up on the generator. So you can see that the, in, a, in a minute you'll be able to see the traffic uh, stats uh, coming in. Okay, so you see the first uh, spike in traffic and you can see the traffic is being graphed on the, uh, on the traffic generator graph. Okay, so in the demonstration we've shown the design, the provisioning and, and the activation of the service. So uh, that concludes the demo. It shows you the power of the SDNO orchestrator.